It's hard not to think about last night. It's really hard not to think about last night. In fact, right now, it's all I'm thinking of. This channel exists for almost two years. October, um, October 18th, 2021. And it didn't take long to see someone, whoever if it's Inter Miami, the Florida Panthers, the Miami Heat, the Miami Dolphins, even the stretches, the Miami Marlins, would see someone win a championship. Just any. And we came close plenty of times until the curse has finally been broken. Wow. Wow. Last night was overjoy. Intense, crazy, roller coaster emotions. You name it, it was all there. It was literally. Everything that you wanted is in that game. It was insane. I'm not saying it's the best game in the tournaments. No, there was there was really good ones. But I'm saying for for us, it's it's a joy to live forever. To think that how far this team has come. I remember the first days in the 2020 expansion. This and Nashville. I remember when uh, Pellegrini was their first signing. I remember when Rodolfo Pizarro came in and scored the first goal. I remember Lewis Morgan becoming the top scorer of, of that year. I remember Blaise Matuidi's scandal that happened. That's unfortunate to say. I remember Gonzalo Higuain coming in. I remember Federico coming in. I remember Breck Shea. I remember. I remember letting go Diego Alonso. I remember bringing in Phil Neville. I remember bringing in Robbie Robinson. He was a good player, and I believe he's. I believe he's still on this team. He might be gone by now, but I remember so much of it. I remember so much of it. There were a lot of dark times, from that year up to this point we started the, we started our franchise 0 and 5 we lost to LAFC we lost to uh, DC United then COVID hit so we were out we were break on break for about a few months then MLS is back tournament I remember losing in a heartbreaking way against Orlando City that was the worst day of my life and and the game wasn't even close to making it the worst day of my life. Personal reasons, like a death of the family, was one of the ways that was a big blow. Then we lost to Philadelphia. And then we lose to New York City FC until finally we got our first win against Orlando City in Drive Pink. Then you know who was our next opponent afterwards? This team, Nashville. Where we lose one nothing. My point here, we've been through some tough times with Inter Miami. This year has changed drastically. And before I do this recap, I do like to say one thing with this year with Miami sports. It's, it's been incredible. The Dolphins made the playoffs for the first time in six years. The Miami Hurricanes and the FAU Owls both made it as far as the Final Four in NCAA March Madness. Oh, and and we can't forget the fact that they also won the Conference USA title, FAU. And then Marlins still shockingly above 500, still in still in possession, still in the wild card spot as far as I know, but it's still a tight race. And then the Heat and the Panthers both in their respective leagues made it to the championship round and lost and, lo and both lost and then there's this team into Miami we started off this year 2-0 and then we got on we went on some horrible losing stretch 
horrible. It got so bad we had to let go of Phil Neville. It was overdue. It was terrible. It was absolutely awful. So, and then since then, we bring in Dr. Martino and the rest is pretty much history. And then at, the, at that point in June, Messi decides to come to Miami and made an instant impact for this team um, from this league's cup. He has scored nine goals up to this game, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. Has changed a lot of things for this team. Now remember this, we were winless for a long time. That's just a fact. And the League's Cup came and, and changed everything. From that first goal, dead last in the standings, up until the League's Cup Finals. And who we play against our expansion twin, Nashville SC. And I said this in the preview, we don't have, we don't have quite the good history with Nashville, especially playing in, in Nashville, Tennessee. They have more wins against us in all competitions. Our last victory was, well, this game. But before that, it was the U.S. Open Cup round of 16. We won that game 2-1 at Dry Pink. Who's to say it can't happen here? Well, <laughs> it did. In a scary, crazy, fanatic way. Everything I just spoke of leads to this point. Now, we can finally talk about this game. And I'm still really thinking about last night. Okay. All right. Leeds Cup Final. Um, inaugural Leeds Cup Final Tournament, which is a super tournament. All MLS teams and all the teams from Liga MX come together and play each other to try to get to this big tournament championship. Someone has to do it, and this game would dictate it. In this game, it was 1-1 into penalties, and Miami wins it 10-9 on penalties. Now, who scored? We'll talk about it. All right, in the first in the first half, um, into Miami's possession has been um, has been pretty good. Um, although Nashville's back line, uh, Nashville's back line. They they have a good back line. It's just a fact. They have they have a good enough back line to make some um, to commit some turnovers um, for uh, for uh, Miami. Miami was committing turnovers, and that's that was their big problem with this tournament. Even though the offensive thing has been really good, the the back line and the turnovers were a big factor in this entire tournament. I, that's just a that's just that's just straight straight up talk. So we have to make some cliche. And some, and some decisions here to try to get down the field to the other side, to the Nashville side. Eventually, someone scored in this crazy 3-1 um, attack. And honestly, like I said uh, before this recap, he scored nine goals until this one. It's Lono Messi in the 23rd minute. Gets one into the back of net. In front of everyone, he has now scored 10. He scored 10 goals in this tournament. 10 freaking goals. My God. Already, he is he is a few goals behind Gazal Higuain. He has already has his 10th goal. He scored all in these games. All seven back in Cruz Azul, that's one. Next against Atlanta, that's two. He scored two goals in that game. Next game was Orlando. He scored two goals in that game. Next, it was Dallas, who um, was was a tough task because we had, we faced an adversary. He, scored, he also scored two goals in that game. That's seven. Then, Charlotte, he scored one. So that's eight. So Cruz Azul, Atlanta, Orlando, Dallas, and Charlotte. Five games. Next, Philadelphia. He scored one. That's nine within six. And now we get to this game, Nashville. Seven games, ten goals. My goodness. That is crazy. 
and they're saying it's not a big shocker. Well, for us, for us, it may not be a shocker, but it's but it dictates the game, and everyone should know this. It dictates the rest of this game, whether if it's a bad thing or a good thing, depending who you root for. For us, it's a it's a great thing, and and we needed that goal because Nashville's back line has been really good, solid, and with that goal, we go up one nil. We go up one nil in this game. Then the rest of the game, um, Nashville's trying to get one into the back of the net to try to, um, to try to equalize it, and um, and and with that being said, there was um we had to we had to do something about it. So the back line and the goal saving from Drake Calendar, and by the way, as much as Messi has been has been a rock star for Inter Miami. You need to give credit to Drake Calendar. He has really, really saved this tournament for us, and he had to, and he had all the rights to be the man at that match today. Drake Calendar, a spectacular goalkeeper, and um, and I thank him for saving us the game. And um, and then we go to halftime, pretty much. Then in the second half. Majority of the time, it's been Nashville uh, trying to get the equalizing goal. Well, for Miami, they're trying their hardest to try to get up 2 0. They came close a few times before the set piece goal. And, um, and you would think someone was going to score it here. And, and with this game, not only do they have a good back line, but they have, a, they have really good players. One player come to mind. It's Henny Mukhtar, reigning MLS uh, MVP. Mukhtar. He almost, he came close to scoring uh, the go-ahead goal later. Because in this because in this instance, in the corner kick for Nashville, it was Fafa uh, Picolt. I Sorry if I get that wrong. Um, he managed to get one in uh, for the equalizing uh, from a set-piece from a set-piece corner. Um, and that and that ball. Um, managed to get get to him, and um, and he puts one in. Now with now with that, um, there was a ricochet from Drake Callender who almost saved it, but it was an unfortunate bounce that led to the back of the net, and Nashville ties it up one one. Nashville had that momentum swing big time, and and um, Miami was in trouble and. And mind you, Miami has had a turnover issue, and Nashville capitalized on those issues, and they commit some foul problems. So they committed some foul problems, and almost gave the game away. Mutar, um, Mutar almost scored a go-ahead goal, but that was missed just wide to the right, just wide to the right. And then a few fouls later, there was a there was another foul and another free kick. Calendar saves it. Drake Calendar was laser focused on saving those soccer balls, and and um and nearly nearly trying to get something in. Now we get to the now we get to stoppage time. There was three minutes of stoppage time. Nashville trying to put the game away, and they made a mistake. And there was a and there was a quick pass to. Uh, to Leonel uh, Capana, it was um, Capana coming in, trying to make that go-ahead goal. Um, I believe it was Panico, uh, who was the goalie for um, Nashville. Let me just double check if that's his name. Yeah, Elliot Panico. He was off that line, and Capana, no one there to cover the net. Try to get that slider to try to sneak one through to try to win this game before going to penalties. And that ball was just barely missed on the left side. I was as emotionally distraught as you could possibly imagine. Um, I should have shoot. I should have done a, a whole reaction to it. I really should have. 
I would I, I wasn't thinking it because I was too focused on the game. But then so, but then one of my friends decided to get the camera up anyway, and we get to the penalties. So then here we go, penalties. Score ends up being one one. Now we get to the penalties as you saw the reaction video. And by the way, thank you so much to for watching that video. Um, I didn't think that video would blow up that, that, like that. So as far as I saw, it was 25K. It's at 31K. That's my, 31K. My goodness, people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, for those new subscribers, thank you so much for coming in, watching, um, Really acknowledging just how happy I was, and acknowledging um, USA happiness. If if you were into Miami, thank you, especially for those who rooted for Messi their entire lives. Barcelona fans, Argentina fans, really anybody out there who commented on the video and then given some acknowledgement. So thank you for that, and thank you for the for 400 subscribers this morning. I didn't expect it to blow up like that. It caught me off guard, but in a good way. I strongly appreciate it. To the new subscribers, welcome to Miami TVG. I will not let you down. I will not let you down. You have my word on it. I will not let you down. You guys come in, um, subscribing, commenting, liking, motivates me to continue to keep doing what I'm currently doing right now. Stronger, better, and and yeah so thank you thank you for that now we go to the penalties um so we so it's in mind we starts off Messi um gets one into the back and then on the right side that was um that was i was like yeah next was uh hanny mokhtar um their best player gets one into the back of the net next up was boots cats he puts one in Rando Leal. Um, that ball was saved. So there was there was some big hope. Big hope there. Next up was Capana. He comes in for Martinez. He gets one in to the left side. Annabelle Godoy um, gets one in too. Kamal Miller, the Canadian international, puts puts one through the right side. Next was Walker Zimmerman. He was a he was a great player in Nashville, and I believe it was LAFC. I could be wrong, but he, good player. Walker Zimmerman puts one at the back of the net, and then we get to Victor Aula to fit to try and finish it off, and he didn't. That ball was saved from the left side, and Sam Surridge um, ties it up. So then we go to extra rounds. It was Kristoff, a Ukrainian international. He puts one in from the from the from the top right. So that was a big goal. Um, next was Shaq Moore, who ties it up again. So stress is coming. So the the big stress, as you could you could possibly imagine from a reaction, and you could tell, I was distraught. Mind you, this I hardly got to see a championship win in my entire life. Hardly. Um. I started watching sports in 2014, not 2013, not 2012, not even 2011. So yes, I did not get to see the Heat winning the championship. I had different, um, it's a long story. So now we get to um, round seven, Jordi Alba, he gets one through. Then next up was Daniel Loftiz. I apologize if I get one wrong. He ties it up in um, in round seven. Now we go to round eight. Diego Gomez gets one in through the through the middle. Lucas uh, McNaughton ties it up. Next was David Ru Ru sorry David Ruiz, and what and what a move! He stopped mid kick and then gets one through. What a move! What a move that was for David Ruiz. Sean Davis puts one in. DeAndre Yedlin is next, and he gets one in from the left side. That was impressive. 
And a fast kick, Jacob Schaffelberg um, gets one through from the left. Then we go to round 11. It's the goalie matchup. So the goalies comes in. Um, it's a bad feeling initially. But when Drake Callender puts one in, wow, Drake Callender puts one into the back of net. That's one of the reasons why he won man of the match. Now he saved soccer balls for us, but he has put us in a go-ahead position to win this game. After Drake Callender, it's Elliot Panico. Panico, I'm sorry if I get that wrong again. It's up to him to tie it up once again. Kick to the right side. Calendar saves it. No violations there whatsoever. Sorry, Club America. No violence there. No encroachment. Clean play. And the rest is history. The rest is history from this finals. And. Wow. My reaction. You, you, you saw my reaction. It says it all. Uh. Just thinking about it a little bit, um, got to be a little emotional. It got to be a little emotional from it. Um, that ends the game. Drake Callender saves the saves the penalty from Panico, um, and for the first time, uh, not counting the Carolina Challenge Cup, Inter Miami has won his first trophy in the inaugural Leeds Cup tournament. First trophy of franchise history. We got through some obstacles. Um, we got through some big, big time teams, such as Orlando City, Philadelphia, Nashville, Dallas was the most. Av I think that of all the teams, this team and Dallas gave us most of the hard time. But at the end of it all, it was all worth it. Into Miami wins this one, uh, ten nine in penalties, one one. In, uh, in this game. First ever Leeds Cup champion, is, and it's really a big thanks to Drake Callender, Busquez, Alba, um, Callender, if I, if I have sets already, Kramashi, um, Capana, Martinez, and a big thanks to Lionel Messi. Um, 10 goals, plus two more with the penalties. He has clearly won the MVP in the in the Leagues Cup. He has won a tr he has won two trophies: one for the Leagues Cup and one for <laughs> one for himself as a top scorer of this tournament. Um, and three years uh, and four seasons went into Miami, and they and they got their first trophy. And this chat and Miami TVG has been around for two years, and we've seen our first trophy together. First trophy together. I knew somebody was going to do it, but it's a Miami coming in to do so. It's truly special. The fr David Beckham put together and Jorge Moss put together this big, big team for all of us. <laughs> it's worked out pretty good. And 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 credit to Chris Henderson too. All of them contributed for us. And we got and this is gonna be a good future. I already said I said a while ago our future is bright and has gotten brighter. Let's all enjoy this moment while we can. Because on Wednesday, another tournament continues for us. It's the US Open Cup semifinal. And we're playing against a really tough FC Cincinnati team who are the top of the East. So but we're gonna be we're gonna celebrate while we can because come Wednesday, we're back to work. We're playing against a big time team like FC Cincinnati, and if we get if we beat them, we go to U.S. Open Cup Finals. How about another How about another trophy championship for us? You know, <laughs> we'll see what happens. So I will I'll be back here for Wednesday night. I'll definitely make more recaps. Like this, now solely focus with U.S. Open Cup. But right now, let's all enjoy ourselves again. And and back to work Wednesday. It this was truly, truly special. 
And then we go back to the MLS season. And I believe Messi will make his uh, MLS debut on Saturday against the Red Bulls. I'm not quite sure. Um, but, you, but, but you want to know who else we have next? It's Nashville. So we're not done with Nashville quite yet. <laughs> and then, um, and yeah, folks, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button. And subscribe for more content because Miami TG has it back. And when he does, he'll be right there with you for the entertainment you deserve. This is Miami TVG and your Leagues Cup champions. Signing out. We'll be back Wednesday. And, and yeah, folks. Take care. Adios.